Um, yeah, again, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your time. And basically, we, we, we're doing a um, like podcast where we've been watching all sorts of comedy movies and we've been talking about the best ones that we've seen and doing like a tournament. So That's My Boy was one of the ones that uh, we've watched. We did an episode on it a few weeks ago and it was against Liar Liar, I believe, and we thought that That's My Boy was the better film that's gone through. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's great to be able to chat to you about the film today and kind of everything that went into it. Well, thank you very much for having me. I had a great time making that film with Adam. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. I mean, if you think it was fun watching the movie, you should have been on the set. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how was it that you first heard about That's, That's My Boy? Because, I mean, we're looking on IMDb. I don't know if everything's credited, but it says it was your first like, on-screen acting role since, I think, 1985. So for that one to be the one to come into, how, how did you get there? Well, Adam called me um, out of the blue, to be honest with you, and said, it's interesting what happened, because he said, I want you to do a film with me, um, and you have the part. You don't have to do I said, well, how do you know I'm not going to suck? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to go in there and then find out that you're all pissed off because I was terrible. I said, yeah, yeah. Well, I love you too much as a friend. Why don't you let me do a scene? for whoever it is that has to see it. He said, you're crazy, you've got the part. I said, no, I wanna earn the part or else I don't feel good about it. He said, okay, so <laughs> he, he, I go to his office and sitting in his office is a camera and some of the big Sony executives and I do this, the was up scene that you remember. <laughs> <laughs> that whole Sony, is that back, right? Yeah. So I finished the scene. <laughs> and there's this very quiet sound coming from all of them and Adam goes thank you very much Tony <laughs> and I said uh, okay he said uh, thank you I said oh right well he said we'll, we'll let you know <laughs> I walked out of there going I really blew this <laughs> I would have my mouth I would have had the part I sucked in there just now, and now <laughs> so a whole month goes by, and I don't hear from Adam. Now oh, wow. remember, Adam's a friend. I don't hear I don't hear a word from him. I'm thinking. I said to my wife, "I I blew this part. I had it. And I blew it with <laughs> my fat mouth instead of I wanted to audition. Ask for an audition. <laughs> so finally, I get a call, Mr. Orlando. Yes, this is wardrobe for that's my boy. Um, <laughs> And that's how I knew I got the part, you know? Oh, wow. So when I finally saw him at the table reading for the first time, he said, I really shook you up, didn't I? Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking he about... Is the nicest guy. Let me tell you something. With all the <clears throat> movies that you guys cover and all the movie stars you may talk about, I'm in this business 60 years, Okay. Not in my entire 60 years, and I've met some great people. Have I ever met a nicer, greater, more normal person than Adam Sandler? If you want to talk about someone who never changed, he's just the same dude. He doesn't put on any airs about him. He's a great husband, a great father, a brilliant actor, a brilliant director. He's just a genius on legs and, 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 and thinks about his friends. If you notice, he has many of his friends in many of the yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just his heart. That's just his heart. He doesn't want to see anybody not make a movie. You know, come on, make a movie with me, you know. <laughs> and this is a guy that's made three billion, I say that with a capital B, <laughs> million dollars in box office sales for Sony. That's the most any comedic actor has ever made in history. How do that you is a relief to hear he's a good guy. I won't lie. It's a relief to hear he is as good as he appears to be on screen. And what's so great about your interview is because Adam and everybody associated with that movie says when they go out in public, that's the biggest reaction they get from any of the movies they've made in terms of comedy. Which, which oh, wow. really, found, we found that unbelievable because the movie was not a big successful box office film. It was a huge DVD, huge. Mm. I mean, huge. 
it became such a cult following that movie that it really made up for it dollars. But when we when I walk through an airport and I see a guy's your age, because I'm 76 and you're what, 14 years old? How old are you? <laughs> you guys are young, young men, right? You guys don't know that I had a history as a recording artist, I'm sure of it. And I've sold 200 million records in my lifetime. And I had the first million selling record in your country with Ty Yellow Ribbon. And most people your age see me in the airport, they have no idea about that past. It's only Orlando and Dawn or Dawn. So they only know one thing. My career to them comes down to one word. What up? <laughs> I call my every pet. I get that at the airport. What up? Like, hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> You don't get tired of that at all. No, it's been a, it's been a, um, a lot of fun. Post that film, it has been a lot of fun because people stop me, especially guys your age. <laughs> they stop me and they go, "That's the fucking funniest movie." I ever <laughs> saw. We were saying about it that. I know critics weren't particularly kind to it, but then you speak to anyone that's seen it and everyone loves it. So it's like polar opposites when you look at the reaction he got from them and the reaction he gets from us, having seen it on the DVD or in cinema or whatever. Sorry, the sound is a little... It sounds a little... Hang on a second. The critics were... Oh, the critics. Well, the critics have been... Quite frankly, they've been wrong about a lot of movies by Adam Sandler. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I can't. I can't figure it out. I don't know what they expect from him, but he knows it. He laughs at it. You know, he's <laughs> funny, and he'll say to you, "You know, we're not going to get great reviews or something like that." I mean, he always. I mean, he's so cool with it. It doesn't bother him at all. Like he just did this fantastic, uh, incredible performance in that recent dramatic yeah. performance. Uncut gems. And got no recognition at all in the, at, the, at the Academy Awards. And I don't care who you are. I mean, if you talk to Al Pacino, you talk to anybody who's ever done anything in film, they say that was, a, that was almost sacrilegious. I mean, to not to give this guy a nomination in that movie, uh, the Gems movie, it's, it's, yeah. it was wrong, you know, because he was as strong an actor in that as, as you'll ever want to see. Yeah. But, How uh, did you meet him to start with? He was like, Adam, don't mean anything. And that's why he, he continues to make films that make Adam happy. Yeah. You know, I watched him on the set. And although he's not the listed director in that movie, he's directing that movie. He's co-directing that movie. Because every scene that you do, he's sitting in that tent watching it back on that screen. And if he doesn't laugh, we got to do it again. Wow. If Adam ain't laughing, it ain't going on that screen. And when I hear him, <laughs> I go, oh, we did it. That's cool. We did a good job. Yeah. But, you know, I'm really proud that you guys have a single that movie out as a funny yeah. movie and giving it its due. I really mean that. I want to thank you for that because all of us who made that movie, uh, all of us, we, we, we became close. We all talk to each other still. Uh, Milo is still a friend. Vince Miglia, we talk to him all the time. You know, and it, it, it's, um, it's a family that happened out of that movie. And did, we continue to be close. Did you think it might be a bigger hit than it was, like, immediately? Like you said, it's picked up cult following since. But did you think it might be bigger at the time or was it always accepted and that the critics won't like us anyway so I assume that anything Adam did anything that he would do would be a hit yeah yeah and it was funny it's interesting my daughter who's your age she's 28 and a movie lover and when that movie came out and she started seeing how much money it was earning she would say well how could they call this movie not doing well when <laughs> this other movie was doing less money and they were touting it as a hit? She, she was making a comparison. I don't know how that happens. Yeah. All I know is that in the bulk of work that 
Adam has done. There's been brilliant comedy movies he's made. I swear to you, this is the truth. Even, even all the people at Happy Madison say it. They all get this. That's our favorite. They all get, that's my boy is my favorite. And can I share a story with you about that's my boy premiere? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, please, please do. So when I first read the script, I was the only guy in the whole movie. By the way, the name of the movie at that time was called I Hate You, Dad. <laughs> called That's My Boy Yet. So I get, I go to the table read, and I read the script, and I say to Adam, hey, man, I really want to thank you. I'm in show business 58 years or 57 years, whatever it was at the time. Over 50 years, and I've never cursed on stage. And you don't have one word in this movie where I curse. I, I just want to thank you for that. He said, you know, and he always called me Tony Boy. Tony Boy, I know. I wouldn't have it any other way. Absolutely. No work. No problem. So we go down. We get down. We read. And I go into the film thinking that I don't say one bad thing in this movie. <laughs> Well, do you remember the scene <laughs> where we're at the spa? Yeah. The face is covered. Remember that scene? Yeah. So before we go it's got to be the best scene, I think, for us, I think. Right, right. Maybe so you know the best coming, scene. Right? You know what's coming, right? Yeah. So Adam says, before he goes, before they go, roll, let's shoot it. Adam says, Tony boy. I said, yeah. He said, I want you to say this. We're going to get our kids. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. Just, you want me to say that in this movie? Yeah, man, he said, it'll get a big laugh. I said, but you said I was the only one in the movie that wasn't going to. He said, I know it's coming from you because you never curse. It's going to get a huge laugh. I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself do I? stop making a $75 million movie and I have a chance to be in this movie because I don't want to say that. That's pretty stupid. So I go, okay. So I do the scene and I say it. Now comes the premiere, right? I have my mother. My mother <laughs> oh, wow. All wanting to come to see the movie. They have no idea that that line is in the movie. So my mother says, I'm going to the premiere. I can't wait. I said, no, you're not going, Mom. <laughs> she says, what do you mean I'm not going? I said, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Why? I, I say things in this movie. I can't sit next to you. She says, I'm 80 years old. Do you really think I haven't heard every curse word there is? Yeah, but you've never heard me say anything like this. Yeah. You can't yeah. Have you yet. Finally, she goes, I'm going. So I called Adam. <laughs> I said, Adam, my mother wants to come to this thing. My daughter wants to come to this thing. When that scene comes up, I don't think I can handle sitting next to my mother and my daughter. Okay. He goes, don't worry. I got it covered. I'll have you sitting separate. I get there. He walks up to me. He goes, hey, Tony, I didn't have enough room in the theater. It's just... The four seats together. <laughs> I said, oh, you got to be kidding me. You know, so now comes that scene. And as that scene comes to come, I, I duck down and I hear it come. <laughs> I hear me say the scene and the theater erupts. In that <laughs> just like he predicted. And the loudest laugh I hear of all is my mother. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I look at my mother and I said, wait a minute, you think that's funny? And God bless her, rest her soul. She looked at me for the first time in life and said, I think that's the funniest fucking thing you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so and then my daughter said, Dad, stop it. You're Spiro. You're not Tony Orlando in this movie. You're a character. It's yeah. the way movies are made today. She saved me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story. You know what I'm saying? You would feel that way with you had your mom in the movie, wouldn't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs>
<laughs> How was it? Let me ask you a question, Luke. Would you yeah. feel that way if you went? And we, did you have that? Yeah, scene? I wouldn't be saying that in front of my mom at school. <laughs> <laughs> no, she would, would be a great yes. fun. <laughs> Look, how was it that you met Adam originally? Again. How was it that uh, you met Adam originally? How were we together? How did you meet Adam? Oh, originally, I'll tell you how I met Adam. There's a guy named Brooks Arthur who's been with Adam since 1993. He's his musical guy. And he's also produced all of Adam's early, early comedy albums. Okay. Okay. So uh, Brooks was my first manager when I was 16. Okay. And we've known each other all our lives. So he worked for Adam. And one day I get a call and Adam gets on the phone and he says, Tony, this is Adam Sandler. And in the States, uh, during the 70s, I had a, a network television show. It was on for four years on CBS in the States. And he gets on and he says, I just want you to know, I used to watch your show. I was a kid. And he said, uh, I used to watch your show every week. And I'm a big fan. And he talked to me like, like, like we talked to Adam Sandler. Like he was, in, he was talking to me like I'm some kind of a big star or something to him. And I got right away that he was just really a sweetheart. And from that day on, I would see him, not all the time, but when I saw him, it was a lot of love behind it, you know. And it just grew. And then one day, he did the movie with Al Pacino. I forgot the name of the movie. Right before Jack that. Jack and Jill. Yeah. And he called me up and he said, I want to use He Don't Love You in one of the scenes, which is a record I had, a number one record. And I said, great, and he used it in the movie. Then that, after that came that phone call about That's My Boy. So All right. the Pacino movie to That's My Boy is when there was a, a connection, work connection, not just a friendly connection. Yeah. To this day, if I text Adam right now, this is the truth. I get an answer in a second. There's never a pause. And oh. in the most recent film, that great dramatic role, yeah. play, I'm sitting in that movie theater. Now picture this. I'm texting Adam Sandler <laughs> while I'm watching him in this movie. And as I'm texting him, I'm going, holy shit, what a great performance this is. Oh, my God. Oh, Adam. And he's writing back, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. What do you think? I said, man, I can't believe how good you are in this film. I know, dude, you're good. Yeah. Finally says, he finally texts me back and says, I know you're going to fall on your face when you when they end up shooting me to death. And he gives me the ending of the movie. <laughs> then I thought to myself, who sits in a movie theater? He says, I know you're going to laugh your ass off when they shoot me. But who's gonna, who sits in a movie theater? and text the star of the movie and he texts you back <laughs> for the entire hey. 90 minutes of that movie he's texting me back more <laughs> important this part where do you see that part i mean more importantly tony spoiled the ending he's uh, he spoilers he spoiled the ending you can't be having that <laughs> he's real <laughs> it's pretty cool well listen um i i hope i'm doing the giving you all the right stuff about that movie because honestly and truly, I love you guys. I mean this, that you Thank are you. taking the time not only just to have me as part of this conversation with you, all the way from my wonderful England, which I love so much. <laughs> and I've been there so many times. But about my friend Adam, who I... I really think should go down as one of the greats of all time. I really mean that. And any, we firmly agree. Do you? Yeah, good. Yeah. Anytime mm. guys like you do this for him, although he won't admit it, he loves it. <laughs> I know he won't. No, it's cool, man. It's cool. He, but I know he's walking away going, that makes, that fills my heart. And that, that's Adam Sandler. I mean, You'll never know an actor of that size with that kind of body of work. 
that would ever walk into your house and you'd never knew he made a film. He just be yeah, there. yeah. Oh wow. If you could have um, been like a Sandler guy, if, if if you were like a Sandler guy earlier, and you could be in one of his other films, which would you like to be in? You know what? I'd like to be in Rain Over Me. Yeah. Uh, I would love to be able to be in a movie with Adam where it was a uh, a calling on me to to bring a dramatic part to the film. Because I'm not much of a comedian. <laughs> Naturally, I'm not funny. I don't think I am anyway. And I'm much more of a dramatic kind of a dude. You know, whatever Broadway shows I've done, was I played Barnum on Broadway. It's more of a dramatic side, a musical side, but dramatic. And <clears throat> some of the films I've made here in the States for television were dramatic parts. So, and I enjoy that side of acting. And I would love to be able to contribute a performance for him that might nail something for him that he'd be proud of me, like I'm proud of him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He always says he's proud of me, but I'd love to be in a movie where he goes, hey, dude. Like, I remember there was a scene, and that's my boy, uh, where after we shot it, he said, Tony boy, he said, you acted, he said, you nailed it. You nailed that scene. I walked out of there thinking I just got the Academy Award. <laughs> the fact that he gave me that kind of pat on the back, and I'm doing this a long time. I've worked with some greats, the greats in my 60 years, really. And when he said it to me, I just, I mean, I just walked out of there going, my God, Adam Sandler just said I was good. <laughs> That's and amazing. That's what I want to be for him. Is I want always want to be good. I always want to. Oh, always want to make his work and his product respectable, in whatever moment I'm in. Thinking of your funny how he works. He'll you, he'll give you a script, all right. So Luke, I'm going to play Adam Sandler with you right now. <laughs> okay? okay. So we got a script. We you, you learned your lines, right? So let's say your line that you learned was. Um, Tony, would you like to make a dramatic movie with Adam? Let's say that's the line, right? So now you go to sit down. Now say the line. Say it. Tony, would you like to make a dramatic movie with Adam? Now, I'm Adam. And now, like, hey, listen, Luke, 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 uh, this is what I want you to say. I want you to say, uh, I can't stand working with Tony Orlando. <laughs> and you'll say, but I worked all week getting my lines. Why are you changing the lines? Now he'll say that on camera. <laughs> so in other words, you get on camera and you've learned your part, right? You've got your script down, you've got your words down, you've rehearsed it, you've got it ready to go. It's second nature to you. You get there and he changes the whole scene. <laughs> and he'll throw one line at you and go, um, like that one line, we're gonna get up. Right? <laughs> that came out of nowhere. And you'll find throughout that whole movie, everything that you studied and everything that you did at home to learn your script and learn your lines doesn't matter. Because when you get there, Adam all of a sudden says, you know what I think? I think if you say it this way, and then you watch the film back, they go, damn it, that guy was right. I mean, his instincts are stupid. They're so good. They're stupidly great. And so that's, you know, when it comes to working with him, the drama movies, when it comes to working with him, it's unpredictable. So is there in large parts of the film, and like that Spartan, for example, was there where you had a script prior, but then Adam just on the day just goes, you know, no, no, we're changing it up. And was, were there a lot of scenes then that we know and love in the film, but they were just improvised from him? Every scene I did, there was a line change. Yeah. Every single scene I did, every scene I did. And then when he would say it to me, I, I would think it was out of context to what I had originally in the script until I saw it back. Yeah. And then when I saw it back, I went, oh my gosh. 
why was that brilliant of him to, to come up with that on the set you know there was a scene in that movie that was totally improvisational that whole scene that you saw in the strip club yeah and the whole drunken scene coming out of the strip club yeah that was all improvisational oh wow so am i talking too much no 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 no, no, no. no, no. i was just going to ask talk? um i was just going to ask well, tony when, when it came to the story again unfortunately but <laughs> but i i'm in uh i got a little worried because adam had me doing a scene uh as we're coming out of the strip club, he had me going over to the corner somewhere. One of the strippers was having oral sex. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, how am I gonna tell him I can't do this? <laughs> after, after the other scene. Yeah. I can't have my daughter sit in the movie and watch it. I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> what, what am I going to do? So, you know, Lunell, who, yeah, yeah, I go to the trailer and I said, Lunell, I got a problem. <laughs> Adam wants me to go over there, and and he, Spiro, where are you? And I'm over there. And who actually ended up doing it? Uh, Will Forte actually ended up doing that scene. <laughs> and I go, I gotta tell him, but he's gonna be pissed at me because I told him that of the first scene in the spa but i can't go through with this scene. i can't sit in the movie theater and have my daughter watch some girl perform it all set. i just no way she says well just go on in there and tell him <laughs> you think she goes just go tell him so i go over to adam's trailer i know the scene's coming up and i walk in and i said uh, hey adam I got to talk to you. Tony boy, I know what it is. He said, you do? You don't want to do the oral sex scene, right? <laughs> I said, yeah, right. He goes, I get it. I got two daughters. I understand. I get it. No problem. Will Forte will do it. Before I could even say, he knew. Before He got, he got to know me so well that he knew there was a side of me that didn't go there. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. he was sensitive to it, and he took me out of that scene in a second. But the rest of that scene, everything you see, the fight scene, the girl who's eating off my head with the boobs on my head, <laughs> Betty, the the uh, the whole thing is was improvised. Oh, the wow. drug scene coming out, stopping us as we're getting into the car, say what you want to say, improvised. And never once did he change that scene. That scene was a one taker. What you saw happened, all of that, all of it was one take. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, he, he's, he's, uh, he's crazy wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's crazy. Did you, I mean, I mean did you, um... when he did that scene with the mom, my mom that plays my mom, with the tissues? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, it's going to be funny, man. It's going to be funny. And he just has this great, wonderful time. And then the last story I'll tell you. <clears throat> you know the end when he goes and pulls the covers off and he thinks it's to me under the covers? And it's not yeah. me? Yeah. 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 So I said, Adam, are you really going to do a movie where there's incest in the movie? <laughs> he goes, dude, that'll be funny, man. Said, how are you going to, how is the audience not going to, he says, I'll figure out a way. He's I'll figure out a way. So he saves the scene. God bless him. He's so brilliant. He comes in, right? And he ad libs. He throws up into the, once he realizes it's the brother, right? Yeah. Which is what everybody in the audience is thinking about doing. Yeah, yeah, he immediately yeah. Be, he immediately became the audience by doing that. So they agreed with him. So yeah. that part, <laughs> it passes. But here's the part of the story no one knows. 
They finish that scene and I see Milo come in and Milo doesn't have a stitch, not a stitch of clothing on in that movie. <laughs> he is completely naked. Adam says, okay, uh, hey, Tone, Tony, listen, man, um, we need a second in case this people in the at Sony find this really disgraceful. I want you to get under the bed. Uh, I got a mental block on her name. Uh, with Leighton Meester, and you get in the bed with her, and so we can have a safe piece of film to use, like on airplanes. <laughs> I said, well, are you telling me that you want me to come in naked? He goes, yeah. I said, I said there is no way. He goes, will you wear a Speedo? Will you wear a Speedo? I said, okay, I'll wear a Speedo, but I'm not coming in there naked. So I don't know that he's really doing this because I'm about to leave the set. It's my last day. And he just wanted, he's just playing with me. Right? <laughs> I don't know that, right? So we do the entire scene. I get under the blankets. As I get under the blankets, Leighton pulls the blanket away and she says, Adam, I know Tony's daughter too well. Would you please give me a pillow so I can put between me and him? <laughs> she takes the pillow and she puts it between her and I. Now she's straddling me under the bed. And comes the scene, Spiro, is that you? And da, 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 da. And he pulls the covers back and it's me. And I do my lines with him. When the scene is over, he goes, crew, everybody, let's just tell Tony we're putting him on. We're only kidding. Tony, we loved having you on the film. We just wanted to leave with a great hug and a great laugh. And that was my departure from that film. <laughs> I'm doing that scene. And my daughter said it was it was a very, it was actually shown on I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. It was on the outtakes. It was on the outtakes before the film was out, and then finally they, they yeah, pulled it. it. Yeah, right. Oh I'm so proud. I wanted them to keep it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a story. I hope these stories is what you want. They are, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, one hundred percent. Did, oh, did it really? take you? Did it take you a long time to get used to the accent he does in the film? Well, you know, <clears throat> everybody was concerned about that because <laughs> Adam's voice is part of his success. Yeah, you yeah. think about it. Adam's delivery, the sound of his voice, the way he talks, everything comes out. <laughs> you know, it was very humble. <laughs> 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 well, this Bostonian accent. That's what he was doing because it's New England. It takes place in New England. Uh, we felt was a detriment to the movie. His manager, as a matter of fact, Sandy Warning, uh, we made a Netflix movie called Sandy Wexler about. Yeah. Which I was in also. But uh, Sandy, who's brilliant, just brilliant, and Adam knows it, was concerned. And so were the people at Sony that Adam used a voice like that. Because we all know that part of Adam's magic is Adam's voice. Yeah. 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 Right? His style, his voice, his delivery, the way he pauses. But when he did that character, that voice was nowhere to be found. And I think he was talking about, I said, why are you making this movie? You don't need to get down and dirty like this. Why are you get? Why are you getting so funky? Why? And what was the movie about? Uh, they get drunk in Vegas. Hangover. Yeah, yeah. The hangover. Yeah. Show you how brilliant Adam is. At. And Adam said, "You know, Tony, I'm beginning to lose my male audience. I sense there's a male camaraderie that I have with my audience that's beginning to disappear. And I saw that they came." to see that movie and I want them back I want those I want the boys back I, I want to be one of the guys and I want to make this movie because I know it's a guy movie yeah. the other movies I made 50 days that's, that's a girl movie that's a love story yeah. I want the guys yeah. to go yeah <laughs> they're still there you know yeah and that's what made him do that so 
he went back to this character that he did in 1993 in an album. Maybe you guys, because you're fans of his, know the one I'm talking about. I've heard the voice before. I can't say the character's name. Right. And it, and it, did, it was a pretty filthy album, right? <laughs> it was just before he went to uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Brooks Arthur produced that album. And it got a Grammy nomination, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, I think it might have won, got the Grammy. And that was the character basis for That's My Boy. Because that character was an uncle of his or something in New England. And he was dirty talking all the time. And he brought that character to this movie. And he was, Adam's just one of those guys, is, when he's fixed on a character, he's fixed. And he, and he, and he stood tall, he stood strong with I'm not leaving that character. <laughs> Even though yeah. Sony, his manager, myself, all of us said, but Adam, that voice is so, no, no, this, no, no, I'm telling you. So, he's just an extraordinary talent, you know? Uh, maybe of all the things I've done in this business, over 60 years in this business, that's the most fun I had. I picked up my youngest audience because of it. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting people of an age that have no idea who Tony Orlando is, but they know what's up. They know his <laughs> hero, they know that movie. I'm grateful to Adam for that opportunity to gain a whole new audience. Look at you guys. You guys weren't even born yet when I had Tie Yellow Ribbon as a hit in England. <laughs> you weren't even yet that's 1973 yeah. you know i was in your country in 1961 as a 16 year old singer i had a record called bless you that went to number one and i recorded a song called halfway to paradise in america that was covered by a singer named billy fury in england and that's yeah. 60 years ago you know <laughs> so i i i feel a great sense of brothership with you guys and i and i'm grateful that you put me uh in your top 25 of movies and i was part of a movie that's in your top 25 i'm humbled by it really to be honest with you thank you oh well thanks a lot yeah thank very much <laughs> yeah uh, well, thank you for giving us some of your time today we really appreciate it and uh Must hope be. you enjoy the rest of your day stay healthy stay safe stay in prayer and you, Luke? Yep. Your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All three Take of you care. Guys, thank you.